Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Dear friends, welcome to this Mass for the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And may I, as I always do, introduce our wonderful Mass team here. Brother Richard Maidwell, Redemptress by Confrey here at St. Clement's. Young Alessandro here, our film producer, who assembles this so beautifully each week. And of course, our loving and lovely young married couple, Giselle and Paul. Whoever you are, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, you're heartily welcome to this, our garden mass. That we might celebrate the memory of Jesus worthily, we ask the Lord to look upon us now with kindness and with mercy. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you are good. Your love has no end. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. It is better to take refuge in you, Lord, than to trust in princes. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We will thank you, for you will give answer to our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the Book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud. He spoke with Moses, but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldad and the other Medad. The spirit came down on them, though they had not gone to the tent. Their names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then said Joshua, the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. The response is, the precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The, the precepts, precepts of, of the Lord gladden, gladden the, the heart. heart. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. The fear of the Lord is holy, 
abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? From hidden faults acquit me. The precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. The The precepts precepts of the Lord gladden the heart. (coughs) A reading from the letter of St. James. An answer for the rich. Start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. All your gold and your silver are corroding away. And the same corrosion will be your own sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Labourers mowed your fields and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out. Realise that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth, you had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter, you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Your Your word word is truth, truth, O Lord. Lord. Consecrate Consecrate us in the truth. truth. Alleluia. Those who attended last week, um, I apologize for a mistake because last week I read the Gospel due this week and preached on it. So I'll just reverse that and read the gospel I should have read last week and reflect on it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said, and they were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing, because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. So he sat down. He called the twelve to him and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. King Oscar II of Norway and Sweden in the early 20th century, one of the things he liked to do was to visit primary schools and talk informally to the pupils. Calling on a village school one day, the king asked the pupils, could they name the greatest kings of Sweden? 
The answers were unanimous. Gustavus Vasa, Gustavus Adolphus, King Charles the <coughs> Twelfth. The teacher was very embarrassed by the response. So she leaned over to one little boy and whispered in his ear. And King Oscar proclaimed the child to the classroom. Really, King Oscar said, and what did what did King Oscar do that was so remarkable? Uh, the little boy says, uh, I, I, I don't know. The king said, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, my boy. <laughs> the king welcomed the child's remark, even agreed to its stuttering truth. Children have a way of expressing their own limited insights unaided by the delicacies of language which can disguise adult thinking. Their complete and utter dependence on grown-ups makes them frank about their needs. So much has to be done for them. So much has to be shared with them. Their attitude of trust is absolutely essential for their own survival. In today's Gospel, Jesus brings a child to centre stage and instructs his disciples, anyone who welcomes these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes we, me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. In this instance, Jesus doesn't ask his disciples to become like children. He asks his disciples to welcome them. Were the disciples having a problem, do you think, of welcoming littleness? You remember that recently in the Gospel reading, Jesus spoke of himself through the image of the Son of Man, who had to suffer and be rejected and be put to death. Following that prediction of the Passion, Jesus <coughs> invited those who would follow him to pick up their own crosses. In this Gospel, Jesus is now travelling secretly through Galilee. <coughs> he's not talking to the crowds. He's giving his own disciples private instruction. The ministry in Galilee is now over. <coughs> the road that leads to Jerusalem beckons where Jesus has an appointment with death. Jesus is anxious that his disciples understand what is lying ahead. Mark tells us how the disciples respond to this second passion prediction. He writes, they did not understand what he said and they were afraid to ask him. The disciples can't comprehend the future of powerlessness <coughs> that Jesus maps out for himself. They're afraid to ask him perhaps because their worst suspicions will be confirmed. Maybe Jesus means exactly what he says. Perhaps he will face the coming terror without resorting to power tactics. The disciples can't face that scenario, so they start their own discussion group about power and prestige. When the group arrives in Capernaum, Jesus asks them what have they been arguing about so on the road. It didn't take long for their seminar on power to become a discussion about which of them was the greatest. Perhaps because Jesus has an inner council, Peter James and John, that he takes to places the others are not invited to. 
like, for instance, the Mount of Transfiguration. Perhaps the fact that he leaves them behind provokes a measure of jealousy among the disciples. Who knows? Their argument among themselves about which of them is the greatest remains unresolved. Nobody seems to be voting for anyone else. So the, the question of Jesus, what were you arguing about on the road? The disciples now respond in the silence of shame. It is in that silence that Jesus takes a little child, sets him in front of them, puts his arms around the child and challenges the disciples not to become like the little child. He challenges the disciples to have space in their life to welcome the little ones. And when they welcome the little ones, then they will welcome Jesus. It's interesting, Jesus compares himself to the little child, the one who cannot resort to power tactics when they're threatened or maltreated. Jesus' protection is his father. His trust is placed in God who will be his protection. When suffering comes, Jesus never abandons trust in his father. That trust makes him very vulnerable, like a little child. But unless the disciples can learn to welcome that vulnerability, they will never understand the way of Jesus. Jesus offers a permanent challenge to his community to welcome the powerless to make way always for the weakest members of the community. He places himself in their company. As the French philosopher Simon de Beauvoir stated, a society is judged by the way it treats those from whom it can benefit the least. Any society. The vulnerability of the least is something that Jesus not only values, it's the story of his life. As he takes the road to Jerusalem, his own vulnerability will expose him to those who lie in wait. There will be people keen to explore his gentleness and put his endurance to the test. In drawing his followers away from looking to power and prestige for models of discipleship, Jesus invites them to a new openness to the Father. No earthly power can save Jesus from death in Jerusalem. Only his Father can save him from being left for dead. That's what the Father does. That's how the Father welcomes and rewards the trust of the little one. Accepting Father and Powerful King, we bring our prayers for those who need intervention and grace. We pray for Pope Francis, all priests, deacons and religious. We pray in particular for spiritual leaders who have made a special impact on our lives and faith, and thank God for them, whether they are still close, have lost touch, or they have been called to heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. We pray for national leaders around the world. We ask that they carry out their duties with kindness, wisdom and humility. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
We pray for those who have experienced breakdowns of relationships within their families or between friends. We pray that where reconciliation is possible, people reach out and forgive, and where it is not, that individuals can move on and heal. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. <clears throat> Thank you, dear friends, for continuing to send in your prayer petitions, and as usual, I will read a few of them. Dear Father Dennis, Brother Richard, Alessandra, Giselle and Paul, I'm writing to you from Abba, Maine, Australia. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been attending your Sunday Masses since late June 2020. I love the surrounding garden, plants and flowers and statues. When you withdrew indoors in the winter, I found the books and the paintings and the candles <coughs> equally beautiful. Thank you for your inspiring sermons and poems, for Brother Richard's lovely icons, for Alessandro's clever photography, and for Giselle and Paul's many little thoughtful touches. Please could you pray for me to find a suitable house, if it be God's will, I have been searching for 20 months now. God bless you all. Dear Father Dennis, greetings from the UK and South Africa to you and to Giselle and Paul, Alexandro and Brother Richard. As always, thank you for the Sunday Mass. It is a wonderful sign of unity. The two seminarians, Jimmy Mutavero and Arinze, for whom we have been praying in their final year, were ordained to the diaconate on the 11th of September in the Dundee Diocese, South Africa. Thank you and everyone for your prayers. The celebration of the ordination was very moving and joyful, although only 50 people were allowed into the cathedral because of the COVID restrictions. Thank you for your prayers, for the support of family in Centurion and the extended family in the townships of Embalenkle in Impumalanga. Forgive me, Father Dave Gerald, for my pronunciations. They are the most wonderful people. Please continue the prayers as these two deacons continue their journey to the priesthood. God bless you. We remember in prayer the petitions that are put forward at Mass, both read and unread. Dear Father Dennis and team, greetings from Lancashire. I was moved by your comments yesterday, the 19th of September, admitting to having made a mistake. You read your sermon for today's Gospel. I found it so refreshing to hear you say that since you'd prepared a sermon for today, you'd swap today's gospel with the one next week and vice versa. As a Catholic indoctrinated since birth with rules and regulations, my immediate thoughts were, you can't do that. <laughs> but then I said, well, why not? It's taken me a lifetime to change and grow and throw away all the rubbish accumulated during my childhood to now see a God of love. Even COVID restrictions help by allowing me to miss Sunday Mass with church approval. I've been part of your garden community since the beginning and I found it spiritually rewarding especially enjoying your inspiring sermons. Local church community is still important for parishioners, providing the parish with many interests from confirmation classes to coffee mornings. But please continue this important online service for those of us worldwide who get enormous benefit from it. I quote another of your correspondents who sent you a card saying, don't go. Looking forward to another set of Reflecting with Paintings. Thank you and good wishes to you all. Mm. 
God our Father, we ask you to attend the cries of the little people who pray out of their vulnerability and loss. Give them especially an attentive ear. We ask this in the name of the one you call beloved, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Benedictus Dominus Deus Israel, cuia visitabit et fecit remcionem plebis suhe. friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands, <coughs> for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. 
And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <coughs> Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant their peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord.
be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Littleness. Midterm break by the poet laureate Seamus Heaney. I sat all morning in the college sick bay, counting bells, knolling classes to a close. At two o'clock, our neighbours drove me home. In the porch, I met my father crying. He had always taken funerals in his stride and big Jim Evans saying it was a hard blow. The baby cooed and laughed and rocked the pram when I came in. And I was embarrassed by old men standing up to shake my hand and tell me they were sorry for your trouble. Whispered in form, whispers in form strangers, I was the eldest away at school. As my mother held my hand in hers and coughed out angry, tearless eyes. At ten o'clock, the ambulance came. 
with a corpse bandaged by the nurses. Next morning I went up into the room. Snowdrops and candles soothed the bedside. I saw him for the first time in six weeks, paler now, wearing a poppy bruise on his left temple. He lay in the four-foot box as in a cot. No gaudy scars, the bumper knocked him clear. A four-foot box, a foot for every year. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be coerced in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May God bless you, the one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. Stay well, dear friends. Stay safe and stay generous. And a special thank you to all those who are helping us here at Redemptus Publications to honour our charitable outreach. God bless. Thank you.